Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to RCE Kingston. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time and this is my top 25 roller coasters list. Now this list is of course my opinion and you absolutely do not have to agree with my opinion. That's why it's an opinion. Um, I am curious to know what you think of my list and to know your top 10 coasters. So be sure to leave a comment about what you think of my list and your top 10 roller coasters that you have ridden. So, yes, this is my opinion and it is a very controversial one. Um, but without... As it is with all lists, there are just a couple contenders that just barely missed the cut. So, right now, before we get into the actual list, I'm going to show you four honorable mentions that just missed the list. Starting off our list, we have Afterburn at Carolyn's. This is a Beanham and Burt that is super, super intense. This ride pulls positive Gs in every single element. The most intense element on the ride is the Batwing because it just tries to rip your legs off with positives. Next up, we have the shortest ride on the list. This is Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. This ride is literally just the biggest adrenaline brush you can get in the world. 420 feet and 120 miles an hour in less than 17 seconds. It is insane. Dominator is located at King's Dominion and is a being and floorless. This is the longest being and floorless in the world and it is just amazing. It's a very unique layout featuring lots more overbank turns and only five inversions. The Cobra Roll is my personal favorite element the ride because it just pulls a lot of force. Alpengeist is the world's largest B&M invert. This ride has so much intensity throughout its layout. The most whippy element on the ride is the Cobra Roll, which literally tries to rip you apart with the snaps in and out of the element. Overall, a great invert. The first RMC on the list is Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is a very short ride, but in the track length it has, it is non-stop it constantly tries to eject you from the train mainly on the step up and step down after and before the overbanked turn montu is my favorite being a member i know that's a popular opinion but it's true the zero g roll is just super intense and the batwing is everything that people make it out to be it's super intense and overall, the entire ride is just really intense. It is also very nicely themed. Cheetah Hunt is an intimate blitz roller coaster that isn't super intense, but I think that's what I like about it. It's just very unique. It's, it's like a journey out into the safari. It is very nice, and the inversion on there gives some very great hang time. Overall, my favorite family coaster I've been on. Georgia Scorcher is a B&M stand-up coaster located at Six Flags Over Georgia. This only has two inversions, but overall it is just a super fun ride with some very odd floater airtime, which is a very strange feeling on a stand-up coaster. Not super intense, but what it does have is amazing. Superman Krypton Coaster is my second favorite B&M floorless coaster I have ridden, but this definitely has the best setting of any of them. The quarry wall and the interaction with the quarry wall is just beautiful. The first drop overlooking the shopping mall, then diving down into the quarry is just great. The elevated helix is also very fun. Next up, we have Steel Avengers. Okay, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just hear me out for a second. I will explain myself. Just give me 20 seconds. Steel Vengeance may be the world's greatest coaster, but it is not my favorite. It just 
it feels too similar to other RMCs around the world. Sure, the first half is incredible, but during the second half, it just starts to feel repetitive and uninspired. And I just personally am not the biggest fan. Kraken is a being on a floorless coaster at SeaWorld Orlando, and while Superman may have the best setting of any floorless, this is the best layout of any floorless coaster. Both the vertical loops pull great positive Gs, the dive loop is super whippy, so is the zero G roll and final corkscrew. The cobra roll, while being slightly shaky, pulls great lateral and positive forces. Also, the setting and just overall look of the ride is very nice. Wonder Woman has the most intense airtime I have ever felt. This is an RMC recreation, and man, every element somehow pulls airtime. Even the overbank turn pops you out of your seat on the way into it. I, d I don't understand how. The twisted airtime hill and drop off of the S bend are two of the most intense moments of airtime I've ever felt. It is slightly rough for an RMC, but I can look past that just because of how intense the ride is. Copperhead Strike is an amazing and underrated roller coaster. It does everything you can ask for. It has hang time, air time, laterals, positives. Literally everything that a ride should do, it does. The pacing is also excellent, I'm letting its foot off the gas slightly in the end, but that's just building up to the fantastic finale with ejector airtime. The launches, while not being super powerful, are very fun and get the job done. Invader is a GCI family coaster that really is not a family coaster. This ride is very, very fast paced. It has some insane laterals, and while it's lacking a little bit on the airtime department, there is quite a few pops of airtime in the back row. And night rides on this thing are something special. There is no lights in the back out where it's placed, and it's just so fast paced in the night. Overall, a great GCI for a great park. Texas Stingray, located at SeaWorld San Antonio, was my favorite ride at the park. This is everything someone could ask for in a GCI. You have fast floater pops in the beginning and transitioning into small ejector moments in the second half. The location of this ride is also amazing, having a great view of the center lake. And in the back row, the straight drop gives some very, very nice floater airtime. The front row also isn't a slouch, so overall, a fantastic ride. Icebreaker is the most intense family coaster I have ever been on. While the family coaster name doesn't really fit it with the 54 inch height requirement, and the trains do bring it down a bit, in the front row, this is one of the most intense airtime experiences you can have. While you can get slightly stapled, I can look past that for the insane ejector airtime over the top hat and all the bunny hills. The quad launch is also very fun and has some shocking positive G forces. Magnum XL200 is my favorite aero roller coaster. This is just the perfect mix between well made and janky. I love the ejector airtime that feels way too strong for its own good, mainly in the second half. And the floater on the massive camelback before the turnaround is very, very nice. I also love the turnaround, giving some weird laterals throughout. Overall, a great ride. Mako is the world's most overrated B&M. While that does not mean it's a bad ride, it's definitely not my favorite. Being my second favorite hyper roller coaster from the Bollinger and Mabillard manufacturer. This does have some amazing floater airtime, I'll give it that. The 5 second floater hill is just fantastic. But I do prefer the speed hill right before the mid course to it. The speed hill gives close to ejector. Maverick is super intense. That's really the best way I can describe it. There is nothing better than hitting that second launch and going 70 miles an hour. Those stangle dives are just crazy. And not even to mention the intense ejector airtime on the ride's first drop. Overall, you get weird airtime in almost every element. And even the airtime hills give sustained ejector airtime. This was my favorite ride at Cedar Point. My favorite B&M Hyper Roller Coaster is Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. While it is slightly jittery and kind of rough depending on who you ask, this has so much floater airtime, it is insane. 
every hill provides either super strong e- um, floater or weak ejector. The Helix is my favorite turnaround on any coaster, pulling intense positive G-forces for everybody in the train. Overall, we'll ride this all day. Twisted Timbers is the best small-scale RMC. Even though it doesn't turn left, it still has incredible ejector airtime. Most importantly, and most prominently, on the three back-to-back camelbacks. If you have some room between you and your restraint, you're going to be pretty much standing on those hills. But don't discount the Trick Track Double Up. That is one of the most intense moments of airtime on the planet. As well as the Outward Bank Turn is also very intense. The ending isn't the greatest with the snappy overbanks, but the slow zero-g roll makes up for it. My favorite roller coaster in the Six Flags chain is Iron Rattler. This is an amazing RMC creation that interacts so perfectly with the quarry wall. This is by far my favorite setting of a roller coaster. And while it doesn't look like much and doesn't look like it has much airtime from off ride, once you're on it, it is one of the most insane and out of control feeling experiences ever. The first drop is by far my favorite first drop with the double twist. And every single, even the overbanks and all elements give some sort of airtime or laterals. This is needs to be a bucket list coaster for any enthusiast or even if just a thrill seeker. This needs to be on your radar. Gentlemen, start your engine! Intimidator 305 was my number one bucket list roller coaster for a while. And boy did it live up to the hype. For a while, it was my number two roller coaster, but it has slipped down to number three. This is the most intense roller coaster I have ever ridden. And one element you can rarely see, but needs to be talked about, is the very first low to the ground turn. I blacked out on this ride every single time I rode it. And I did not get my vision back until after the sustained ejector airtime camelback. You get airtime on every single of the ride snaps, which is a weird feeling to get lateral ejector airtime. Overall, super intense. Slotting in at the number two spot, we have Fury 325 at Carowinds. This was my number one for the longest time, and I still consider it to be a fantastic ride. This is the world's best giga roller coaster, just barely better than Intimidator 305. I d- don't have enough good things to say about this thing. Like, I could go on for hours. I, The only reason it isn't my number one right now is because it has a slow helix that kind of throws off the ride's pacing in the end. But I can forgive that because right after you get two of the strongest moments of airtime on any roller coaster from B&M. Overall, fantastic. In the number one spot, we have Iron Gwazi. This is my absolute favorite roller coaster and probably the best roller coaster I've ever ridden. Every single element is a standout. There's not a single dull moment on this ride. While the death roll not being as intense as expected, it is still my favorite inversion I've ever been on. My favorite moment on the ride is absolutely either the first drop, the wave turn, or the incredible outward banked turn. The wave turn is so intense, giving lateral ejector. The first drop, you can feel the 91 degrees on it. And the outward bank turn at the very start is so whippy. Overall, I just can't describe the experience on this ride how massive it looks and how fast paced it is this is just the world's greatest roller coaster by far thank you so much for watching it means the world to me that people actually enjoy watching my content i've been wanting to make this video for a while and to be finally done with it is just incredible i want to give a shout out to canopy coasters i got most of the footage in this video from him Be sure to go subscribe to him. I'll put his channel link in the description down below. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, and a comment. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.